again gone ahead and appeared with these videos and as we are releasing these videos right on a weekly basis mostly on Mondays so these videos are all related to the life of one of the national leader who was Dr. Shah Prashad Mukherjee we have moved with a couple of series or we can say like a couple of episodes right that is a uh, so today it's like an eighth episode what exactly we are going to release over here i hope right you guys definitely like it it's just a request from the shah prashad enlightenment federation's family to share as much as you can so that people are aware of this great national leader who was dr shah prashad and like uh, shah prashad mukherjee and what was his contribution right towards the indian political background 1942 Shamar Prashad opposed to the Quit India movement launched by Mahatma Gandhi. Any political movement is likely to fail without leadership and the Quit India movement was no exception. The British moved quickly to imprison the Indian National Congress leaders in an attempt to break the back of this latest challenge to imperial rule. As the Quit India movement was largely a Congress party campaign. This contributed to its decline and eventual failure. Even some leading members of the Congress were opposed to the policy, weakening the party's unity and resolve. Gandhiji was arrested by the British immediately after he made a speech from Gwalika Tank Maidan. He remained under arrest for two crucial years. During this period, in the absence of most of the Congress leaders who were in jail, Indian Muslim League, which had been a very minor player in national politics, gained prominence and captured the headlines with the demand of Pakistan. Had the Quit India movement not been launched, it is possible that Jinnah and his party would have remained a non-entity. Now, it must be pointed out that in 1942, Maulana Azad was the president of Congress, but Gandhiji did not listen to him. In fact, he was so incensed with Maulana Azad's position that he sent him a letter asking him to resign from his post. It's a different matter that Maulana Azad finally relented from his position and was thus retained as president. This entire episode is narrated by Maulana Azad himself in his book, India Wins Freedom. Moreover, the Congress had failed to gain broad backing from other Indian political groups, each of whom had their own reasons for opposing the Quit India campaign. The communists were against it because as loyal servants of the Kremlin, they supported the Anglo-Soviet alliance during World War II. The nationalist Mahasabha didn't support the policy either as they wanted to use the war as an opportunity to militarize Hindus to fight the British when the time was right. For their part, the Muslim League had already announced its support for the British war effort, hoping to extract political concessions after the war and so never signed up to the Quit India movement. Now, Shama Prashad Mukherjee resigned from the Ministry of Bengal as a protest against the governor's policy of repression in Midnapur and elsewhere in connection with August 1942 movement, wrote to Lord Linlith Ko, the then Viceroy, outlining tentative proposals for an Indo-British settlement and attempted to interview Mahatma Gandhi in jail but was refused permission. In 1942, the Quit India movement was launched. British colonial rulers unleashed a region of terror against the mass movement. Congress was banned. Its provincial government were dismissed and India was turned into jail where many died only 
because they had bravely raised the tricolor against the oppressors. The Hindu Mahasabha, the RSS and the Muslim League not only boycotted the Quiet India movement but actively supported the British government in its repressive campaign. In another example of reasonable compromise, Mukherjee wrote to the Bengal governor, the question is how to combat this movement in Bengal? The administration of the province should be carried out in such a manner that in spite of the best efforts of the Congress, it this movement will fail to take root in the province. It should be possible for us, especially responsible ministers, to be able to tell the public that the freedom for which the Congress has started the movement already belongs to the representatives of the people. In some spheres, it might be limited during the emergency. Indians have to trust the British for the maintenance of the defense and freedom of the province itself. In the year 1946, Calcutta witnessed a mass killing scheme drawn out by Jinnah and Shuravardi. It was later known as the Great Calcutta Killing which Shama Prashad vehemently criticized. That same year, he was elected a member of the Constituent Assembly from Bengal. It was in the same year that he, along with a few Congress leaders, fought against all odds to retain a portion of Punjab and Bengal in the Indian Union in order to safeguard the Hindu population. Leaders like Kiran Shankar Rai, Shashanka Shekhar Sanyal, etc. supported this decision of Shama Prashad. Along with this, he formed the Hindustan National Guard in the same year. By this time, the Congress as a party hesitated to oppose acts and bills, which were anti-Hindu and anti-national. Again, when Shama Prashad asked the Bose brothers to support him, they refused, as their position in the Congress had already weakened. Subhas Chandra Bose was almost driven out of the presidentship of the Congress due to the fact that he had contested twice, defeating Pathabi Sitaramaya Gandhi's nominee. At last, Bose was expelled from the Congress as he was trying to form a party of his own. Forward block. Now, Jinnah at this time stigmatized the Congress as Gandhi Hindu Congress. This plea extended the Muslim League, but it did not open any new line for Shama Prashad. Both parties placated the Muslims. The only party that stood behind him was the Mahasabha, which had a great leader in him. Subhas Chandra Bose feared that if Shama Prashad went ahead with his Bengal politics and formed a rival political party, then his own party will be endangered. So, Bose threatened Shama Prashad to stay away from forming a rival party. Shama Prashad never bothered about.